Good evening and welcome to the most excellent way. The Victories Group at Salem Heights uh, Church. We meet every Monday, every Tuesday at South Salem. Um, you know, we we take this very serious with those that are that show up. And we also believe that when Christ sets you free, you're free indeed. So it's important that we um, want to welcome you and let you know that this is a safe place to come, uh, even online. Um, and I'm going to ask Dave to come up here and give us the four reasons why it's a safe place. And then we'll move along. <clears throat> Hello everyone. This is a safe place because we get into God's Word. We uh, don't have our own opinions broadcast because it's only God's Word that uh, produces truth uh, and that's that's why we promote it because it's truth. The next the next reason is we have several hundred people praying for us. Uh, all across the, the world now because uh, the most excellent way reaches from this church out across the whole world. And uh, people have committed to praying for us. And God's word says the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we, we believe that. Uh, the third reason would be is we all get it. Uh, we've all been in addiction of some form. Um, it's actually sin. Sin is an addiction that uh, we're plagued with since since Adam uh, fell in the Garden of Eden. So we're all born into sin and we understand uh, we understand the struggle. So it's a safe group because we get it. Uh, the last thing is, is that unless I've, I've only got three of them, um, the last thing is, is what we what we say here stays here. So when we meet on Monday nights, um, Whatever, whatever we talk about, uh, it's never been told by anybody on the staff or from anybody that has attended that uh, something was spoken of another and gossip going on in the background. That, that's never happened in the last 10 years that we've, we've had this group. So it's a safe place. So there you have it. The four reasons why it's a safe place, why we meet. Um, and sin is an addiction in many different forms and fashions. And before we can deal with sin, we got to admit we have sin in our lives. Um, one of the biggest things we do is we go to the Word of God. He made that mention. And, you know, if you're showing up tonight on the, the live feed, maybe you couldn't make it to our meeting that meets 7 o'clock on Monday um, or Tuesday but you're here, not only do we want to welcome you, but I want to put right out front that what we're going to talk about, faith is our topic for tonight, um, that none of this is possible um, without putting your trust in Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, Dave made reference of that about Adam and Eve when sin entered into the world. But Romans 6.23 says, uh, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life um, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, it's, it's important that we understand that it's not about my opinion, it's not about Dave's or Matt's, it's about what the Word of God says. And right now, before we go any further, I'd like to stop and pray that the Lord lead this time. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time that we have to come before your throne. Father, and before those that are struggling, maybe, maybe they're coming just to get a, a glimpse of what it looks like. Father, I pray that you touch the hearts of each and every individual, in, individual that shows up tonight on the live feed as well as here at the church both men, women, even the children. Father, we pray that you will reach out and touch their hearts and guide this time, Father, that your spirit guide this time. Father, may we um, be sincere in what we say and 
be serious about what we say as well. Father, this is a serious um, time in our our United States in uh, the season of time with COVID. Father, there is so much going on and we have to have faith in something. And Father, we know that faith in you is the only place we can go, that we find true peace, rest, and happiness. Father, we thank you for this time and may you guide this time in Christ's holy name, amen. amen. So with that, like I was saying, you can't pull this off by just doing more good. You must understand that we have all been born into sin. Uh, Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrated his love for us, his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, there was a price that had to be paid for our sins. And in the Old Testament, they would give sacrifice after sacrifice for the cleansing, but there was never a complete cleansing. But when Christ was brought in, and he paid that price, that ultimate sacrifice. He bridged from our sin. Matter of fact, he didn't bridge it. He took away our sins if we will just trust him. Romans 10, 9 says that if we confess with our mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Don't get mixed up. And think, well, God loves me, so I must be okay. Because John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Yes, God loves you. And he loved you so much to send his Son, Jesus Christ, to pay that price. There's nothing you can do. There's no payment that you can make to bring us back to God except for believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1 makes it clear. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have, been, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's being justified by faith, made right by our faith in Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And then you have to live it out. This is something that we stress every Monday and Tuesday night. It starts with the gospel. Because to try to do any of what we're going to talk about tonight without receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, it will not work. So, in that, let's... Uh, Let's start looking at the attitudes of victorious living. You know, what are we after when we came here? When I came here, my life was messed up. My wife was about to leave me. Uh, sin was running rapid in my life as far as my attitude and my actions. And so when I first came and I heard Philippians 2.5, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Isn't that what we're after? A new way of thinking? A new mind? And yet Philippians 2.5 says we can have the mind of Christ. Is that what we want? Trust me. Any other way, it won't work. So number one is humility. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.3 I admit I am powerless over the effects of drugs, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. Number two is repentance. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. I believe Jesus Christ can and will create in me a new way of life. Number three is submissive. Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I give my will and my life to Jesus Christ. Number four, honesty. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I honestly examine myself in the light of God's word. Number five would be merciful. 
Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. I humbly ask God's forgiveness for my sinful past. I am able to forgive those who have hurt me. Now I'm going to ask Dave to come up and do the next six, and then we'll uh, talk a little more. And uh, also, by the way, Jody is should be online tonight, and in the comments, there she is. She gives a link uh, to this particular handout, which we're reading from, so you can follow along and download it even, I believe. Um, so number six is obedient. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, Matthew 5, 8. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. Number seven is reconciliation. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, Matthew 5, 9. I ask forgiveness from all those I have hurt or dealt with unfairly. Number eight is faith, which we are on tonight. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5, 10. I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardships and trials. Number nine is perseverance. Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. I stand firm in my faith that Jesus is in control of all things. That's a promise. Uh, number 10 is loving servant. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew, uh, Matthew 5, 13 through 16. As a new creation in Christ, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. Now, these are the 10 attitudes of victorious living that we go over every Monday night. And with that new mind in Christ, these are the things that come to us that he gives us, that it's a promise if we will seek him first. These things will be made known in our lives each and every day, and it will grow stronger and stronger. If you had the pamphlet and you went to the back, right at the top it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things, the things we just read, each one of these things, each one of these attitudes will be given to you. See, and that's, that's something first and foremost that we must do is we must seek first the kingdom of God. You know, I've said before, and I'll say it again, that Hebrews 12, uh, 2 says, fix your eyes on Christ. Colossians says, set your mind on things above. The whole thing is, is our focus must be on God first. And we get to do that through the blood of Christ. Hebrews 4 says that we can run to the throne with confidence. You know, I can't think of a better place to run to when I'm struggling than to the throne of the God of all creation, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator that loved me enough, all the way down to the very DNA of what I made. He knows me, and he knew me, and he knows you from the beginning of time, before the earth was even formed. He knew you, and he would know that you were looking at this video tonight. Maybe you don't believe that right now, but take my word on it. Take the word of God as whole and know that it is truth. That he knew you and knows you and he cares about you. The word of God is very clear too that uh, it is not any of God's desire that you see any man perish. No man perish. That's man, woman, child. So I mean, yes, God loves us and he wants to see us reunited with him through the blood of Jesus Christ. So, as we look at that, uh, 
right after we get done reading that, we would go to our, I guess it would be like our theme verse. I'll go ahead and read it. On the back, it's Titus 3, 3 through 8. And it says this, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, malice being evil intent, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and regeneration, the new birth, and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified, made right is justified, by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to all men. And then if you were in group, we would ask you, okay, in 30 seconds or less, what stands out to you? Um, for me, I'll even ask Dave to come up and share a little bit too, but for me, um, the good works. You notice there's good works two times mentioned there. The first good works is all about what I thought I had to do to be right before God or to be justified before God. But see, we cannot, there's nothing that we can do to do that except for the blood of Jesus Christ. So we can do all the good works we want. We can lead music, teach Sunday school classes, feed the hungry, whatever. But it's just righteous acts. It's good works. And it won't get you to heaven. But as he saves us, as the scripture says, then he mentions good works in the bottom. And those are the good works by obedience that we do for the kingdom of God. Like this video tonight, sharing the gospel with you guys. Like feeding the poor and the homeless. Loving our brothers. Because we're doing it unto the Father now and not for salvation. So, that's what stands out to me when I read this. Um, Dave can jump in here, and he'll share with that, and then we'll move along. Well, what stands out to me tonight, and it's, it's personal, and it always, um, I'm always affected by it every time I read this passage, that while I was like... Um, Warren had already read, uh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were in a state that was speaking right here in the first few sentences. We were hateful, hating one another, living in malice and envy. I was doing that. That's, And I didn't think anything of it. It was the way I lived. But I was um, invited to a Bible study one night, and uh, it was by faith that I believed the gospel and God changed me at that moment. I didn't know how much he changed me or what what is what would be in store for me after that day, but that was 25 years ago. And I can look back before he saved me and who I am today, and it had to have been God that uh, made the changes in my life. It wasn't me because it's just it was impossible because I knew where I was before he saved me. But... Um, for some of you, you, you might be on the fence. You might, well, yeah, that all sounds good uh, for you, but what about me? Well, I think uh, all of us can fall into those first few uh, words uh, prior to where it says he saved us. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. Um, we're talking about faith tonight. If you believe what God says, if you believe the gospel that He that Christ came, he died for all of your sins, every one of them. And that he was buried and he rose again on the third day. And now he's sitting at the right hand of God at the, in heaven, uh, making intercession for us. He's our advocate. He's, our, uh, he's our, our heavenly attorney. Once he saves us, once we believe the gospel, there's, there's no turning back. We cannot go back at all. We, we are adopted into the family 
and we're there forever. And that, I mean, you can bank on that. Uh, and I'm telling you from personal experience that he has started to do a work in me. He continues to do a work in me and he's going to finish the work that he began because that's what his word says. And so I guess that pretty much wraps up where this impacts me. And it, it's never going to stop impacting me. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself? For... Oh, I'm Dave McMullen. I've been uh, with the most excellent way since it started. Um, and now that you've asked me to introduce myself, I came here uh, to serve I, as a believer. And um, it didn't take very long that when this fourth attitude of honesty came up, that I realized I was not honestly, honestly examining myself in light of God's word, which I thought I knew at that time. But I didn't really read uh, the, the verses that talked about self-examination. And so I found that uh, as any other addict that came to Most Excellent Way, I was a prime candidate. I needed what they needed. Even though I knew the gospel, even though God saved me, I need to be in his word every day. I need to be feeding off his word and then fulfill what he's asked us in, in uh, Titus 3, 3 through 8, that says, I want to affirm const you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. He didn't save me just to uh, make me feel good and, uh, you know, whatever. He saved me because he's got good works for me to walk into. That is a promise also, that before I was even born, he purposed to when I was born and started living my life and after he saved me, that I should be walking into good works. And I, I would never have thought 25 years ago that I'd be sitting in front of you folks tonight telling you the truth about God's word. And if we were in big group, this would be what we would do now is we would get to know each other. And for me, I'm Warren Lund. I came here in 2014, uh, like I said earlier, messed up. My wife was about, well, she had left me and said, unless you get help, I'm not coming home. Um, rightfully so, because I was very angry uh, for my circumstances. I had made a profession of faith a couple times and was baptized, but I just didn't feel like I was a Christian. I didn't, I mean, growing up, some of the ways that the doctrinal beliefs that we had, uh, I thought I could lose my salvation. And early on in my life, I thought I'd done enough to lose that salvation. So I tried to serve God by good works. And trust me, it does not work. You will always fall short. Um, so I came here for counseling, and I showed up to a Monday night, and my heart wasn't right yet. You can... Pastor Matt has made mention of it before that I was pretty uh, bitter towards him. He likes to say there's no other place on a Monday night I'd rather be, and I thought he was full of baloney. Uh, he wanted to be home with his wife or his kids, but not here. But as I got to serve or be served by Pastor Matt, um, and then to be brought into leadership later on, I, I realized that there is no other place on a Monday night we'd rather be um, to do this for each and every one of you. You know, so for me, I had to do some soul searching. And on that blue paper, the one thing that would always ring dear to me was obedience. It says, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You know, even in my darkest time, I would say, man, I want to see God. But then when I really got a true understanding of the word of God and salvation, that he set me free. Uh, Dave said, from all of your sins, past, present, and future. Once you're set free, once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's Romans speaks of, it doesn't give you the right to just go out and sin, because God desires that we live a pure and holy life, but we can only do that through the Spirit of God. And he and he does that in us. 
he cleans us out. There's word sanctification the church has used. I mean, the cleaning out, you know, the changing. And the Lord was doing that. And now it's brought me to where I'm at tonight. From 2014 to now, uh, I give God the glory and the honor because I was running from God when I was asked to come here for help. And God got a hold of my heart and straightened my unbelief. <clears throat> My thinking was way off, and he straightened that up. So now um, I'm serving in different areas of the church, and I do it unto the Lord through the, through the strength of the Spirit of God because I know uh, with all my heart that I, I wouldn't want to do it even on my own anymore. I can't do it on my own. I need the Spirit of God within me to do it, and that's, that's what we're bringing to you tonight. Uh, like we said earlier, if you haven't placed your faith in Christ, um, you know, you receive the Spirit of God upon salvation. And He's our helper to help us get to that point. And it comes by faith, believing in something you have not seen. Hebrews 11 makes that very clear. And I'll read it to you because it helps us to understand Eleven one says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the confidence, the conviction of things not seen. You know, it's very important that we understand that. We're hoping. We're putting our faith, our trust in what this Bible says, that what is truth is truth. And believe me, I would not want to go opposite of the Word of God and try to do truth on my own because there's so many promises. You know, we say it every Monday night. If you'll get into this word, it'll change your life forever. This is our instruction manual. This is our how-to manual to serve God, to love God, to um, submit to God. And so if you're not in the word of God, you will not hear the voice of God and you won't know how to obey God. So for me, I picked it up, and it's like, I want to obey God, so I'm going to read the Bible. And I challenge each and every one of you to do that as we uh, go through this. So after we've introduced ourselves in 30 seconds or less, which I blew it tonight, but hey, here we go. Um, we look at victories, and I've asked Dave to go through our victory coins and explain that out a little bit, and then we'll... We'll pick it up from there. So hang on. Here's Dave. Well, we celebrate uh, victory over whatever it is that, that you're struggling with. And for you folks that are online, well, we have, first of all, newcomers will get a, a token like this. And on the back, there's a verse, and it says, we love you because God first loved us. Mm -hmm. And truly, that is uh, the only way I got into this position is because I love to see other people saved. I like to see what the what God does in people's lives. And it's just truly miracle after miracle that I've been watching over the last year, few years, what God does. And so anyway, we give these out. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic, but... Uh, but it, we celebrate the fact that God is moving in people's lives. It isn't anything like we talked about earlier that we can do to gain uh, God's favor. It is by faith alone, like we're talking about tonight, in Christ alone for what he's done for us. And so as we live day by day in the power of the Holy Spirit, who he's placed in each believer, we can have victory on a day, daily basis. And so this for newcomers and, and for those that uh, are uh, victorious for 30 days, we have 30-day tokens. We have 60-day tokens. And 90-day, we have um, one year six months. or six months, nine months, and one year. And also, if, if it goes past a year, we can uh, use a black marker and mark it, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, but uh, the fact is, is that 
God is working in the lives of believers here at the most excellent way. And uh, we'd love to see you show up. If if you want one of these tokens, you can, you can uh, enter your... Uh, how many days you've been victorious, or even if you're a newcomer here, we'll get you one of these tokens uh, one way or another. Just And we go through all of the comments on the side here that I'm, I'm seeing. Good to see you, Victoria, and I see Richard Delorme and Jody and Sally. Uh, keep we, we try to tell people keep showing up because showing up changes everything. Show up to the Bible, show up to fellowship, uh, whether it be here or elsewhere, and show up in prayer. And those three things um, are very important in a victorious life. Thank so, you. Oh, you want me to do the next one? Okay, and then after we do these uh, celebrations of victory, we ask everyone, what are you thankful for? And we'll go around the room and uh, we'll hear from there's a lot of people that just just are very thankful and it it can be anything so if if you uh have something you're thankful for you can you can write it in um i'm thankful that uh god could use somebody like me uh Amen. or i mean because i i don't i don't feel i'm worthy uh i i fight with that uh often but like we also said earlier, it isn't the righteousness in us that can produce anything uh, that God would honor. It's the Spirit of God working through us. And as we read his word, God has promised through the power of the Holy Spirit to, Spirit, to bring back that word of God as we engage with other folks in, in our lives that it might be that salve that the person needs, uh, somebody that's broken. Because once the Word of God hits the heart to a heart that's open, that is open by God to receive it, it's, it's transforming. And uh, so I'm thankful to be here. And I myself uh, am also thankful to be here. Um, I don't normally say this, but I'm truly thankful that my wife uh, told me she wasn't coming home in 2014. Because at that point in time in my life, I was angry and I was running from God. And had she had not done that, only God knows where I'd be at. But you know, I believe that God has a set time for each and every one of, of each and every one of us to come to know Him. And this was my timing. Um, so I think I am thankful that the things that played out in my life played out for his glory and for his honor, because what I thought was his glory and honor, I was missing the mark. And I don't know how you showed up tonight, but I do ask that you allow the Lord to work in your heart, allow your heart to be softened, uh, in the midst of this. Because truly, he'll take a heart that is rock hard and turn it into a heart of flesh that can be molded and, and made into what he desires it to be if we're just willing to allow that to happen. So I, that's something that I'd like to put out to you tonight is let it take place. You know, just like let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We've got to let it happen. So... This brings us to our lesson tonight as we've made uh, reference to faith. And we, uh, we usually have a card that we pass out. It's pretty, pretty thick. We, we do that so you can take it with you, tear it up, uh, take Scripture out of it, and put it in your pocket um, so you have Scripture. What's, what's the purpose of all this? You know... The Word of God is the only offensive weapon we have against the devil. If you go back into, I believe it's Acts 3 or John 3, uh, where Satan was tempting God, what did he give back? He gave the Word of God. So it's our only offensive weapon. Ephesians 6 says that we are to arm, armor up. So that's where that comes from. So we give you the Word of God on a hard card. You mark it up, you know, 
check it out. I think she uh, Jody's posted that as well. So let's get started. This is the most excellent way. The attitude of victorious living is faith. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardships and trials. Faith in God's promises produces power. You're called, you choose, you commit, you will change. But let's look at, I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardships and trials. How are you coming tonight? What do you have your faith in? Money? Maybe your ability? Uh, self? I'm challenging you tonight to allow the Lord to work in your heart, to see that it, your trust, your faith must be in Jesus Christ. When we face these hardships and trials, trust me, if you are facing these with Jesus Christ as the power, you cannot lose. And that is a promise. So we're going to be looking at Psalms 107. 1 through 32. There's a lot here, so we'll just read through it, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. I'll go ahead and start. It says, Praise the Lord, because He is good. His faithful love will last forever. Everyone the Lord has saved should repeat the words of thanks. Praise Him, all who have been rescued from the enemy. He gathers His people together for many different countries. He brought them from east and west, north and south. Some of them wandered in the desert, dry desert. They were looking for a place to live, but they could not find a city. They were hungry and thirsty and growing weak. Then they called to the Lord for help, and He saved them from their troubles. He led them straight to the city where they would live. Thank the Lord for His faithful love and for the amazing things he does for people. He satisfies, he satisfies those who are thirsty. He fills those who are hungry with good things. Some of God's people were prisoners, locked behind bars in dark prisons. That was because they had fought against what God said. They refused to listen to the advice of God Most High. God made life hard for those people because of what they did. They stumbled and fell, and there was no one to help them. There were in, they were in trouble, so they called to the Lord for help, and He saved them from their troubles. Dave, you want to take it over on 14? He took them out of their dark prisons. He broke the ropes that held them. Thank the Lord for his faithful love and for the amazing things he does for people. He breaks down their bronze gates. He shatters their iron bars. Some people became fools and turned against God, and they suffered for the evil they did. They became so sick that they refused to eat, so they almost died. They were in trouble, so they called the Lord for help and he saved them from their troubles. He gave the command and healed them, so they were saved from the grave. Thank the Lord for his faithful love and for the amazing things he does for people. Offer sacrifices of thanks to him. Sing with joy about all that he has done. Some sailed the sea in ships. Their work carried them across the water. They saw what the Lord can do. They saw the amazing things he did at sea. He gave the command and a strong wind began to blow. The waves became higher and higher. The waves lifted them into the sky and dropped them into the deep sea. The storm was so dangerous that the men lost their courage. They were stumbling and falling like someone who was drunk. Their skill as sailors was useless. They were in trouble, so they called to the Lord for help and he saved them from their troubles. He stopped the storm and calmed the waves. The sailors were happy that the sea was calm again, and the Lord led them safely to where they wanted to go. Thank the Lord for his faithful love and for the amazing things he does for people. 
Praise God in the great assembly. Praise him when the older leaders meet together. All right. In mess in the big meeting, um, there's a lot here, so in a short time, so we're going to have to hit some points. But we would ask you in 30 seconds or less, what stands out to you? You know, we all have faith in something. The question is, is it in the right thing? As we read this, we see many different uh, situations of life. You know, we could take a, a whole bunch of time and look, but there was those that were wandering, they were hungry, they were thirsty, um, they were in prison. God's people, catch that, some of God's people were in prison. Locked behind bars in dark prisons. That was because they had fought against what God said. You know, I would have to raise my hand there. I was, I was in a prison, but little did I know I was already saved. I just had an ill understanding. And yet I stood, I, I stayed in that prison um, because of my own understanding. Uh, they refused to listen to the, uh, the advice of, the, of God Most High. We see that some were fools and turned against God. Suffer, and they suffered for the evil they did. They became sick and they refused to eat. Sin will make us sick. I know sin will, I mean, to the point of you just want to die, and you almost do die. They were in trouble. And then we see the ship and the high seas. But, you know, even in that, I want you to catch a few things. The waves lifted them high in the, in the sky and dropped them into the deep sea. The storm was so dangerous that the men lost their courage. These men were going out to do work, to do their business. They were men of the sea. They were just going to work. But see, God will sometimes use the things in our lives, like our job, or like our loved ones, or our health, to get our attention. See, we have consequences. But as we go and look at these men of the sea, the next line says their skill as sailors was useless. You know, each one of these examples today, um, we see that there's a positive and a negative, or should I say a negative and a positive. It gives a description of those that are wandering in the desert. But yet, did you catch verse 8? Thank the Lord for his, or wait, let's back up a little bit. Let's go to six. Then they called to the Lord for help, and he saved them from their troubles. You see that same thing. In 13, they were in trouble, so they called to the Lord for help, and he saved them from his troubles. Again, we see in 19, they were in trouble. So they called to the Lord for help, and he saved them from their troubles. Do you see what's going on? There's a pattern here. But as we look at each one of these things that Psalms 107 brings out, there's no aspect of life that he didn't leave out here. We can be even running from God, and God will use those situations in life to get our attention. You may notice I walk with a cane. I was running from God. God used the circumstances in my life to get my attention. I fell from a ladder, messed up my back. I walk with a cane. It's for stability. But you know what? It's a reminder each and every day. And I thank the Lord for it. Because I now know what he desires of me. You know, sin carries us into consequences. Just let that mold for a minute. We will sin until we have to pay consequences. If you think back, before you sinned, you weren't calling out to God, or maybe you were, and you weren't getting the answers you wanted, and you continued in your sin. But you notice in each one of these patterns on 107, 
that they had to do something. They recognized they couldn't do it on their own, and they had to put their faith, their trust in somebody. So they called out to the Lord, and he saved them from their troubles. You know, this rings so clear to me because we're going to face hardships and trials in our life, whether we're a Christian or not. But where we draw our strength and where we, we put our faith and our trust is key. Before I truly understood that God wanted a relationship with me, I put it in money. I put it in my ability to do my job well, to raise my kids the way I thought they should be raised. It was all done in my own ability. But when God allowed my circumstances to break me, as we read in 107 here, I realized really short ordered that he was calling for me and he wanted my attention because he desired something from me. And first and foremost, I had to get it straight where my faith lies. So I'm challenging you today with this question, where do you put your faith? And the faith that you, whatever you put your faith in, is it strong enough to save you for eternity? See, God desires a, a relationship with us as we shared in the first, and that is only through Jesus Christ. So if you're putting your faith and your trust in anything other than Christ Jesus, you will fall short. But see, the nice thing is, is we can run to the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, we use it quite a bit here on Most Excellent Way. Hebrews 4, 12 through 16. Read it, I challenge you, because you'll see that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's interceding for us. And that we can run to the th throne of grace with confidence. Where do you have your faith today? I'm going to ask Dave to come up, share a little bit here, and then we'll share a bit more, and then we'll then we'll finish up. But let's see what Dave has to say on this subject. Well, what struck me as I was listening um, is that we don't have to wait until we get to verse 18 here. It says, it says they became so sick that they refused to eat, so they almost died. We, we all through these verses we see uh, variations of how long a person waits before they call out to God. Mm -hmm. And I have found in in my lifetime that the sooner I do that, uh, the better it gets. Uh, if I if I live in my sin and I don't confess it. I believe Psalm 32 says um, your body starts to just wither away and it just dries up. I don't know if you can relate to that, but I can. Um, I need to take uh, every moment and and uh, have close accounts with God. Uh, take all my thoughts captive. Uh, and he's promised, if you confess your sin, he's promised to take it from you and and everything that led up to it, all the unrighteousness that led up to that. That's a promise. We've got many promises here. Uh, God says that he, he, he comes in your time of need. Mm -hmm. uh, you were in trouble and he saved them from their troubles. I guess the question is, do you want to be made well? Uh, that stood out to me. Do I want to be made well? If I do, I'm going to have to go the only one who's going to make it well. It's not going to be uh, turning to my addiction. It's not going to be turning to the things of this world. It's not going to be turning to my own thinking, which we're going to find out uh, later on in our in our discussion here. So I guess it's a matter of if you're a believer, if you believed on Christ for your salvation, you have the power to say no to sin because the spirit of God in you is greater than he who is in the world. The the world, the enemy and the flesh wants to attack our faith and wants our flesh to, to raise itself up and take control. But God is power, more powerful than that. Um, 
tonight we're talking about faith. We have to believe that promise. And when we do, he, he, become, he proves himself to be faithful to us. You know, he, we are talking about faith. Romans 10, 7 uh, says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word, the Word of God, the Word of Christ. How do we get faith? From hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. You know, there's so many verses that we could take you to that could support everything that we're saying. But Hebrews has a lot to say about Him doing it for us. Hebrews 4, 7 says, He again fixed a certain day, today, saying through David, after so long a time, just as he had been said before, today if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Today if you hear His voice. I shared with you earlier that this is the voice of God. You're not going to hear a voice from heaven saying, do this. You'll hear it through men of God, women of God, sharing the love of Christ, saying this is what you need for eternal life. And the Bible is clear. I just read it to you. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Today is the day of salvation. If you don't know him, today is the day that you surrender if you are a believer and you've been running in sin or running away from God, today, that same today is today when you hear his voice. Verse 11 of that same chapter says, Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall through following the same examples of disobedience. You know, God desires that we have a healthy heart, a heart that is pliable, that he can use and work with. You know, I said it before, I would have never imagined sitting before you today doing what I'm doing. And it's only through the grace of God and the power of God that we have the opportunity to do this. So, as you've heard what we said, you might be in that prison cell with the door wide open. Or maybe you're, you don't know Christ and you're, you're stuck in sin and, and addiction. The good news is, guys and gals, that you, you have reached the point of forgiveness right here today. All you've got to do is ask him. And he won't say what took you so long. Because he desires that relationship to be pure and holy between you and them. Between me and my God. The one true God. So as we go through that and we have time to hear what everybody has to think, uh, our, our goal is to break down by 8 o'clock or so and get into small groups. But we have a few quotes here. Uh, I'll, read, I'll read the quotes and then I'll ask Dave to... Uh, what time is it? Yeah, I'll ask Dave to read the the last <clears throat> scripture. The first quote we have is, we make faith more difficult than God ever made it. Isn't that true? We can overthink it. We can, uh, we can make it a lot harder. The second one, oh, that was from Vance Har Harbner. And the second one is, Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed... God will move mountains in your life. But some people believe that if you have, that you need the faith of a mountain to remove a mustard seed. You'll see in the Word of God that the illustration of a mustard seed, it's, as far as I know, still the smallest seed there is out there. You can put it on a, the head of a stick pen. If you have that much faith, you could move a mountain. You know, when I hear that, it's like, Lord, give me that faith. Help me with my faith. Strengthen my faith. 
So this, the next quote is, the larger the God we know, the larger will be our faith. The, the secret of power in our lives is to know God and expect great things from him. That was from A.B. Simpson. The secret of, of power in our lives is to know God and expect great things from him. Do you know God today? Maybe you do. But have you been expecting great things from him? How big is your God today? I'm going to ask Dave to come up and read Proverbs. Share just a little bit. I'll share and then we'll uh, close it up. I love the word of God. Let's, let's read Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. That's a promise. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Uh, wherever you are tonight, um, you can take this to the bank. He says, he will make your paths straight. If you acknowledge him in all things, if you believe with with your heart that he's that he is God and that he was and he was raised from the dead, you have the ability to trust God where you hadn't in the past. And as you trust, he will make your path straight. How are your paths uh, right now? Are they how are they doing? Um, when my paths start going to the left or to the right. I know it uh, because the Spirit of God tells me so. He says, hey, don't go there. Um, so his word is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's going to it's gonna do surgery on you. It's going to make you uh, walk these straight paths as you're obedient. Uh, and he will lead you in the right way. And so the point is, uh, what I want to make here, what I get out of this is believe this. Believe this is true. That's where we have to start. Those of you who have not placed your faith in, in Jesus as your Savior, believe that he will make your path straight. This is a piece of scripture that I memorized, that I share most all the time. This is a must for us to walk in the faith we have been given. And we must have faith growing. You know, for me, it starts with trust in the Lord. Just the way the verse starts, trust in the Lord. But the key point is it's not, well, I'm going to trust the Lord with this, but not that. It's with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Like we said before, we don't know how you're coming in tonight. But my question, like Dave asked, is how's this working for you, leaning on your own understanding and being wise in your own eyes? You know, verse 6 starts with all your ways acknowledge him. Do you acknowledge God with all of your ways or just the ones that you can't handle? I'm not saying this to break you down, tear you up. I'm saying this to evaluate your life. Only you can do it. It's between you and God. We're just bringing the word of God by the spirit of God so that he will do a mighty work in you. For me, this verse was very key to me changing my whole way of thinking because I would trust in the Lord as it fit my needs. Not all my ways were in his ways. And I leaned way too much on my own understanding, which led me to believe that I could even lose my salvation. And here's a big one. I didn't acknowledge him in all my ways, just in the ways I thought he might want to be acknowledged. And you know what? My path wasn't made very straight. I found myself being way too wise in my own eyes. I wasn't fearing God, and I wasn't 
by any means turning away from evil. So I found myself, even in the midst of this verse, or these verses, that I wasn't receiving the healing to my body and the refreshment to my bones. If you do this, folks, as the verse just clearly puts out, He will take you all the way home, all the way to glory, doing His will. But if you want to fight against it, take it from a man that knows it's not going to work and it's not going to turn out right. So, my words to you tonight, uh, if you take anything from me personally, is a very simple thing that Joshua said in Joshua, I think it's uh, I think it's 24 verse 15 uh, or 14 that he says, and he was talking to the Israelites, but it applies to us today. It says, choose you this day whom you will serve. And then Joshua goes on to say, uh, but as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I pray that tonight for each and every one of you, that you will make that commitment to serve the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Like I said before, I don't know how you came in here or what's going on in your life. But I challenge you to reach out to somebody. Uh, you don't have to spill your beans on the side notes here. You can uh, email the pastor. You can call the church. Um, we do keep things private. So if there's something private that you want us to pray about or talk to you about don't put it on the on the comments here but reach out i mean you the information's there it's right before you to reach out and get the help you desire um to help you come to know jesus uh clearer and to know him as your lord and savior it will be healing to your body and refreshment to your soul bones and to your soul for that matter so, as we leave, let me pray for you guys and for us as well. And then we'll call it a night. But don't, let, don't go to bed without making the decision tonight to follow Christ. It is the most important decision of your life. You can take that to the bank. So let me pray for you. Father God, we thank you for this time that we have to open your word to uh, chew on your word, Father God, that you've allowed us to see some of just the basic steps to know you clearer, to know you better, to know you as Lord and Savior, and that you give us the path to righteousness. You give us the path to living out right living in you. You give us the Spirit of God when we call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, to guide us and direct us. Father, you give Christ, your son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for each and every one of us, but you also allowed him to come to this earth as an example for how we must live our lives. So, Father, I pray for those that are tuning in tonight, um, those that are upstairs with the men and the women at the other end of the building, and even the children tonight, I pray, Father, that if there be anybody that is struggling with this, that you bring it to clarity, that you... Show them, Father, that they need you more than ever before. And, Father, that this is the only trade, true way of worship that you desire. This is the only way of repentance, Father, is to surrender our will and our life to Christ. And that our faith, our trust, our hope is rooted in Christ so deep that nothing can take it away. Father, you are our Savior. You love us. You sent your Son as our Savior. You blessed us with the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. And I pray now that those that are your, that you're tugging at their heartstrings, Father, may it be today the day of salvation for those people or the day of repentance. Father, I know what it's like to be a believer that is confused and even find myself in that jail cell. So, Father, I pray for those right now that are struggling with that. I pray that you bring it to peace and have them surrender their will to your will, Father God. We thank you and praise you for this. And we do this, that you may be glorified and honored in all that we do and say. We love you. We praise you in Christ's holy and precious name.
Amen. Like I said, folks, if you have something you want us to pray about or to talk to you about, reach out tonight. They'll get back to you. You have a wonderful evening. Thank you.